boy. Unbuckle them. Let's take them, Craig. How bad did he hit you? I'll let That one's done for. How about him? <laughs> Janik and Clegg Wiley. On the afternoon of July 7th, 1868, they blazed their way into our bank in Denver, gunned down our banker Sam Gallagher and forced his daughter Mary to open the vault for them. They'd stuffed two canvas bags full of gold and greenbacks and ridden off with $71,000. That's a big chunk of money to take out of a town of 6,000 population. On our police force, there are only nine men. I'm a detective on that force. Named Smith. My partner is George Romack. We take our orders from our chief, John Richards, and his orders had been to bring back that money and the men who stole it. We had the men, all right, but not the money. And only one man could lead us to it. And he was blind. Yeah, he's blind, all right. Will he ever see you again? Hard to tell. You mean I don't have a chance? I didn't say that. Last time I saw a case like yours, a man got his sight back completely. Pressure on the optic nerve. An operation relieved it. Then operate on me. I'm no surgeon. Closest eye specialist is a thousand miles away in St. Louis. And his price comes high. I'll pay him anything he wants. With what? I got the money. You talk like it was yours. Look, Jenny. I'm sorry about what happened to your eyes. We'll try to help you if we can, but you're going to have to help us, too. Tell us where you hid that money. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? Listen, lawman. I may never see you again, but you won't see the money either. You finished, Doc? Yeah. Uh, I'll send over a bottle of medicine to help with the pain. I'll look in again tomorrow. Hey, Chief, you get that telegram from Santa Fe yet? No, not yet. But you boys shouldn't mind waiting. Jail's like a home to you. What do you think, Smitty? What are we going to do about that money? He's never going to talk. Only one thing we can do. Get some men together and search that whole valley. Well, that valley's 30 miles long. He could have hit it anywhere. He's right. I'm afraid it's a wild goose chase. Well, this particular wild goose is worth over $70,000. I think it's worth a try. So they finally caught up with you, sad boy. Who are you? An old friend of yours, Ben Avery. Avery? Yeah, my brother Rex is here, too. We helped you pull a little job a couple of years ago. At the bank at Echo City, remember? Oh, yeah. I remember. That was, uh, quite a haul. And maybe you also remember you didn't hang around and divvy it up. He just grabbed it and lit out. Where's it now, Thud? You ever hear of wine, women, and song? No, I can believe that. What are you boys in here for? Suspicion of robbing a stagecoach. Only we were in jail in Santa Fe when it happened. 
Sounds like you made another haul, Thad. Where'd you hide that money? Now, I don't know what money you're talking about. I'm not about to tell you. You know something? I'm glad about what happened to your eyes. Real glad. We'd searched Locust Valley for three full days, trying to find the money Janik had hidden. But it rained the first day out and washed away any tracks we might have followed. We had no luck at all. And then at the bank came a hint of further trouble. When I told Mary Gallagher and some of her depositors that we hadn't found their money, a desperate mortgage-ridden farmer spoke for the others. Either you get Janet to talk, he said, or we will. There are ways of forcing him. Mitty, they don't mean to use force. They're just scared. That money means life or death to them. I know that. Well, isn't there anything else we can do? There might be. Mary, you said the other day you'd give a $2,000 reward. Does that still hold? Of course. I'll see you later. What do you want? I'm in the office. I want to talk to you. Sit down, Jen. How would you like a chance to get your eyes back? Don't say that, Smith. Not unless you really mean it. I mean it. Well? This town needs that money you stole real bad. You let me be your eyes and guide us to it. The money's back in the bank, we'll send to St. Louis and get that specialist. Bring him out here and let him operate on you. The bank put up a $2,000 reward. That'll pay the cost. What happens to me after that? That'll be up to a jury. The operation's the only trade we can make. How about it? All right, you got a deal. When do we leave? I'll let you know. Here's that telegram from Santa Fe. Put him back, will you, Jim? I don't know. I don't like it. What if he's got friends on outside waiting to help him? The kind of friends he have would keep the money. He knows that. It's about the Avery's. I'm gonna have to turn him loose. You really think Janik's gonna lead you to it? it? May take some time. I'll need a pack horse and some supplies. He offered you a deal, didn't he? What was it? Nothing. Was it about the money? Look, Thad, don't be a fool. He's a lawman. If you want to make a deal, make it with us. We're your own kind. Yeah, yeah. I know that. That's what I don't like about you. Oh, come on, Thad boy. I was just trying to do a favor for a blind man. No hard feelings. Here. Have a smoke. Thanks. <laughs> That's your idea of a joke? Burning a blind man? All right, you men. Your horses are out in front. Get on them and keep riding. Well, what do you know? The chief found out we were telling the truth. And probably for the first time in your life. Now, get him. <laughs> See you in the morning, Johnny. We're leaving early. The sooner we leave, the sooner that eye specialist gets here. Don't forget the right. As we headed out of Denver toward Locust Valley, the hopes of many people rode with us. But my spirits were high. I thought the only problem I faced was whether or not a blind man could find the proverbial needle in a haystack. Where are we? 
Rock Creek turnoff. Trail splits here. North Fork follows the ridge. South Fork goes down to the river. We took the South Fork. You sure? Is there a big red rock up ahead? Sort of shaped like an Indian head? Yeah, just off to the right. We rode just under it. There's a trail about a half mile down the river. That's where we turned off. you couldn't see. I can't, but I can hear. There was a waterfall not too far away. Hear it? Yeah, I hear it. Mister, when a man loses his eyes, he's got to see with his ears. Mine ain't lying to me. This is the place, all right. I don't see any side trail. We turned off by a big pine tree. Its trunk was split down the middle. You got a good memory, Johnny. There it is just up ahead. We can catch up with them easy. We don't want to catch up with them. Not yet. That rabbit sure smells good. So does the coffee. Funny how a man takes all his senses for granted when he's got them all. I ever get my eyes back, Smith, I'm going to be a changed man. I'll never be able to get my fill of just looking. <laughs> We're being followed. I don't hear anything. I tell you, somebody's following us. Horses, two of them. Coming down the same trail we took. They're slowing down. But they're still coming. in the next cell. I was afraid it was them. They're after the money. They'll kill us to get it. Oh, I don't think so. Look, I've ridden with them before. They're fast guns. They take what they want. They won't touch us till they see that money come out of the ground. I think we'll let them see it. First thing tomorrow morning. We won't be there that soon. We know that. But they don't. <laughs>
out here. Don't move unless I tell you. Don't give him a chance, Smith. Gun him down. Thanks, but I'll take him alive if I can. Ben, I don't want to kill you. get down there. I fell. I, I, I can't get out. Help me, will you? You all right? Did you get them both? Yeah. Smith, don't ever leave me alone again. I need you. You're the only eyes I got. Come on. Well, it's noon now. We ought to be there before dark. Say, my head's panning me. Where's that medicine the doc gave me? Over in that pack. I'll get it for you in a minute. No, let me try. Uh, just tell me which way to go. It's about 30 feet straight ahead of you. The ground's level.
What's wrong? You almost got yourself bitten by a rattlesnake. I, I guess I owe you my, my life, Smith. Sure glad you got eyes to see for both of us. Yeah. Well, from now on, if you need anything, you just sit still. I'll get it for you. tree you told me about. There's some uh, jagged rocks down at the foot of it. That's right. Well, what are we waiting for? Looks like we made it. Where is it? Look for the biggest rock around. There's a log near it. Money's under a little rock next to it. You sure didn't bury them very deep. We were in a hurry. <laughs> I sure do want to thank you, Smith. Delivering me here safe and sound. Even digging up the money for me. By rights, I guess I ought to give you a reward. Let you keep a thousand or two. But I'm greedy. I want to keep it all for myself. That's what I figured. But it won't work, Jack. That's not what this rifle says. What does it say? You really want to hear? Well, listen good. Throw it away. I dehorned that thing a long time ago. When I found out you could see again. When was that? That rattlesnake back in camp. You heard the Avery brothers a half a mile off. All of a sudden, you couldn't hear a rattlesnake ten feet in front of you. There'll be another time, Smith. I got my eyes back anyway. Next time, I'll have my own gun. You got your eyes back, all right. But you want to know something? You still can't see. Carnival time in Denver when we got back to town. And no one minded the nonsense that went on. For the strange adventure had ended as all of us had wanted it to. The working men from the farms and mines who had lost their savings got their money back. And the bank opened its doors again. As for Thad Janik, he played blind man's bluff and lost. He proved a truth that those who wear a badge have always known. That every man has five senses but a lawman must have a sixth sense. The sense that warns him when a rattlesnake's coiled and ready to strike.